Good Sunday morning, my dear friends. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we join with the Bodna of Presbyterian Church as they celebrate 148 years as a church community and 102 years worshipping at their current location. And we thank Almighty God for our own sanctuaries where God so graciously calls us to worship. In Psalm 27, the psalmist declares, One thing do I desire of the Lord, to be in the Lord's house all my days. Let us make this our prayer today. May we be in the Lord's presence all the days of our lives, through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. We join together in singing the hymn number 473, 473, We Love Your Kingdom, Lord. Praise God. Let us join in prayer at this time. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned and we have fallen short of your glory. Lord, we are aware of the many ways and the many times that we have disappointed you. We come now before your throne of mercy as we beseech you for your mercy and your pardon, for only you can forgive us, O God. It is only you who can make us whole. Merciful and loving God, do forgive us today, and do cleanse our souls that we may renew a right spirit with you. We thank you for your cleansing power and for your assurance of pardon. We thank you for keeping all our people whole, so that we can worship together once more. We thank you, God, for anniversaries and birthdays, and for every success and achievement which you have so graciously granted unto your people, and for this great privilege to bring all our prayers and petitions before you. So, dear Lord, hear our prayers today and accept our worship, for we bring them to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 
Our scripture reading today will come from the Psalm number 84, Psalm 84, Selected Verses. Miss Cynthia Gobin of the Bodnav Presbyterian Church will read God's word for us. Our Psalm selection is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 84, verses 1 to 4, continuing with verses 10 to 12. And I'm reading from the Good News Bible. It's entitled, Longing for God's House. How I love your temple, Lord Almighty. How I want to be there. I long to be in the Lord's temple. With my whole being, I sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrows have built a nest, and the swallows have their own home. They keep their young near your altars. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, how happy are those who live in your temple, always singing praise to you. One day spent in your temple is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather stand at the gate of the house of my God than live in the homes of the wicked. The Lord is our protector and glorious King, blessing us with kindness and honor. He does not refuse any good thing to those who do what is right. Lord Almighty, how happy are those who trust in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, word without end. Amen. Praise God. We join once more in song as we sing the hymn number 324, 324, Great is thy faithfulness, O God our Father.
We now join in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we lift up our hearts to you, knowing that the grass withers, the flower fades, but your word, O God, endures forever. So bless the words of my mouth and bless the meditation of all our hearts, that they may be acceptable unto you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today we rejoice with Bodnav on the celebration of their anniversary and we thank Almighty God for all our other churches, Lengua, Barakpur, Rushad Douglas and Clark Rushad, and for all our leaders and members who tirelessly fly the flag of our Lord Jesus. When I think of your work in the Lord's service, I am reminded of the song which says, I never get weary yet. I never get weary yet. I never get weary of praising the Lord. I never get weary yet. We meditate today on what our church really means to you and to me. And as we consider this, we recognize that the church is not the building. It is really the people. Those set apart and those called out through their baptism to be in the assembly of God's people. This includes all of you who are hearing my voice today. You are the church. We see this clearly during COVID restrictions. We cannot gather together in one building, yet we continue to worship as church. The church is very much alive, even though the buildings remain closed. But while we recognize that the church is really the people, we must never underestimate the importance of our church building or sanctuary. Because on a church anniversary, you do not only celebrate the believing community, but you also celebrate God's sanctuary where you worship. That building is a symbol of your devotion to Almighty God. Have you ever had the opportunity to prepare your sanctuary for worship? I know that you do it joyfully and it is part of your devotion to Almighty God. You see, our church sanctuaries mean so much to us. We were baptized there. Some of us got married there. We have celebrated special occasions and said special prayers in the sanctuary. Many have testified that life would be poorer if you took away the joys and blessings they experienced in church. That is why we typically identify the community of the church with the church building itself. For us, it is one and the same. Think about the sacrifice of the people who established your church almost 150 years ago. They would have sacrificed from their meager earnings to construct a sanctuary, no matter how humble it was at that time. So your sanctuary today must remind you of God's abiding presence with our forefathers in the faith. That is why we feel compelled to celebrate and thank God today. We do not worship the building as if it was some kind of idol, but that building speaks of a people's devotion to a loving God and Savior. You know, in the journey to the Promised Land, God instructed Moses to build a tabernacle. It was there, that central place, that the people will assemble to worship their God. Many years later, King Solomon would build a temple which became the central place of worship for the Hebrew people. Jesus himself never built any church. He worshiped in synagogues and in the temple. The early disciples also never built any church buildings. People willingly gave their homes for worship. It was not until around the year 250 AD that the first church was built. Thereafter, churches were specifically designed to create an atmosphere for true worship to Almighty God. But one thing is certain, no matter how humble, 
or how elaborate the sanctuary God's people have always loved their church. So on your anniversary, I encourage you to cherish the sanctuary where you worship. Listen to me carefully. Your church is a place designed for people to meet God. There are many today who are longing for God. And perhaps because of their lifestyles, they have not been able to feel God's presence. Although God is everywhere, that is the purpose of the church. It is here that the Spirit of God reigns. We can surely find God in the church. It was in the temple that the Jewish people would go to offer their sacrifices, their prayers, their praise, their thanksgiving. Every year, Hannah would make a pilgrimage to the temple. Luke's Gospel tells us that Simeon was directed by the Holy Spirit to go to the temple. Anna the prophetess remained in the temple day and night. That shows the centrality of the place of worship for the children of God. Your sanctuary, my dear friends, is just as important for you. Your church, whether at Bodnaf, Lengua, Barakpur, Rushal Douglas or Clark Road, is your temple. Listen to this. I know many who come into the church early just to whisper quiet prayer. The power of the Holy Spirit is powerful in our churches. When we enter our church, we are moved to say, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And so we see in Psalm 84, the psalmist praises God for the place of worship. He says, how amiable, how beloved is your house, O Lord. We today need to feel the same way about God's house. Whether your building is a tent, a tabernacle, a church, it has the same attraction to the worshiper. The psalmist says, my soul longs and even faints for the courts of Yahweh. These are the passionate words of a worshiper, a believer like you, like me, longing to be in the Lord's house. We're like the psalmist. We are in the presence of God. Today we miss the assembling of God's people in the sanctuary. And we grieve like the psalmist as he expresses a deep desire for his beloved place of worship. The psalmist confesses that he longs to be in the temple where he could stand in the presence of the living God. And he envies the sparrow which has built a nest near the altar. The psalmist sees a special joy among those who have the opportunity to be in God's house, who are in God's presence. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are always praising you, he says. One day spent in your house is better than 1,000 days spent anywhere else. Today, however, our, sang our anniversary it's not all about the beauty and the comfort of the sanctuary. We have a challenge before us. We must evaluate whether the fellowship of our church has grown, has prospered. What has your church achieved since the last anniversary? What has it achieved in its spiritual growth, in the growth in numbers, in financial growth, in its outreach? in its fellowship. And don't just blame the local board or the elders because we all belong equally to the body of Christ. Celebration of anniversary will be more meaningful if we would measure how our church has grown in the past year and how we have contributed to that growth. And then our anniversary must motivate us to make a new commitment to the community and the place where we worship. Yes, commitment. In Psalm 27, the psalmist declares, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. The psalmist must have strayed from God's way 
and from the assembly in God's tabernacle, just like some of us. But he must have done an evaluation of his personal situation. And now he makes an amazing commitment to worship in the house of the Lord. The psalmist makes a commitment to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. Whatever has been his past, the psalmist now wants to devote his energies to God's service in the Lord's house. In the house of the Lord, he would behold the beauty of the Lord and he will learn more about God. That is what the church is for. We sometimes sing the song, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. That is the beauty that the psalmist wants to behold. So what is your desire today, my dear friends? I pray that you will never forget the great legacy of God's holy church that has been passed to your care, that you will never neglect the privilege of worshiping in the sanctuary, in the assembly of God's people. I pray that you will always evaluate your contribution as a member of the body of Christ. And I pray that you will make a commitment like the psalmist to be in the Lord's house all my days. That is the best way that you can honor Almighty God on your anniversary. In that way, your anniversary will not just be the passage of yet another year, but your anniversary will be a spirit-filled experience for all who belong to the assembly of God's people. As I close my meditation this morning, I leave you with some words of the hymn writer Timothy Dwight as he expresses his love for the Church of Jesus Christ. Here's what he says. I love thy kingdom, Lord, the house of thine abode, the Church our blessed Redeemer saved with his own precious blood. For her my tears shall fall, for her my prayers ascend, to her my cares and toils be given, till toils and cares shall end. May God bless us graciously, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join in prayer. We praise God this morning for this opportunity to lift our deepest desires unto Him. We praise God today for this opportunity to bring others in our prayer before the throne of grace, knowing that God is listening to the prayers of all of his people. O Lord our God, we thank you for the vision you placed on the hearts of your people who planted your churches at Bodnav and all the churches in the Barapur pastoral region. We give you thanks, O God, for the commitment and dedication of everyone who served at the time of origin and over the past years in your sanctuary, in the assembly of your people. For the faithful ministers, the elders, the managers, for individuals and families, some are still serving today in music, in leadership, in counseling for the efforts of those who teach we pray lord for those who encourage lord we give you praise for those who now serve you among the saints in heaven for the ways that they have witnessed to you on their journey of life on this earth we thank you for them we thank you now for answered prayers that have come through this church and through your people for faithful and vibrant worship and the preaching of your word, for the singing of your praise and the seeking of your strength. We thank you for the commitment to remain true to your word in a world full of confusion and full of conflicting voices. We praise you for the generosity of scores of men and women who have given their service to your people in other communities, in so many ways. We pray, O oh God, now for our children, in our families, in our community. We pray for our teachers. We pray for those who will 
support our young ones, who will give them advice, who will treat with them materially, O Lord, where there is a great need, O Father. We pray that you will love and protect all our children from every evil and danger and distraction that come their way. We pray for those who suffer today from serious ailments. As we lift them up to you, we call their name. We whisper their name with love, O Lord. We pray for those who live a solitary life. Father, we pray that you will use the hands of those who are healthy to bring relief to the lonely and the weak and the underprivileged around us. Almighty Father, I ask you today to answer the secret prayers of all of your people today as they lift them up to you, every boy, every girl, every man, every woman, as they lift up prayers for someone and for themselves today, O God. Do not turn away from them. I pray that you will accept all their prayers. You will bind their prayers, O Lord, as they bring them to you, trusting in your great and mighty name. We place our prayers before your altar, before your throne of grace, as you make these prayers imploring you, O God, to answer them according to your will and purpose for us. In the name of our mighty Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Praise God. For our closing hymn this morning, we sing number 477, 477, Your Hand, O God, Has Guided. God. I thank all of you for worshiping with us today. Do have a safe and wonderful week. Until we meet again, let us join together for the benediction. May the God who gave us our past and the Savior who walks at our side each day and the Holy Spirit who fills us always with life abundant May they grace your paths with peace and hope and joy. And may they grant all success to you and to me, to all our children and loved ones, and to all our churches, especially Bodnav Presbyterian Church 
and to all God's people and children everywhere, both now and forevermore, we now chant together the choral benediction.